nothing was around before the Big Big Bang. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space and time together form a space-time continuum or manifold which is not flat, but curved by the matter and energy in it. I adopt the Euclidean approach to quantum gravity to describe the beginning of the universe. There is nothing south of the South Pole, so there was nothing around before the Big Bang. 138億年という想像もできないほどの遠い昔時間が存在する前のこと無限の密度と温度を持つ一点のみが存在していたその一点から突然無限のエネルギーと光が放たれたその現象は宇宙の始まりを告げる大爆発となりビッグバンと呼ばれている地球に向かって宇宙の全方向から一様に飛来しているマイクロ波は宇宙マイクロ波背景放射 CMB と呼ばれている138億年前にビッグバンが発生してから38万年後宇宙で放射された光がその後138億年という長い年月をかけて現在の地球に届いているものだこの CMB がビッグバン理論の基本的な根拠となっている138億年前に宇宙は誕生しそして地球は46億年前に誕生しましたその後地球上に哺乳類が誕生したのは2億 3,000 万年前で人類が誕生したのはほんのわずか20万年前のことです18世紀中期からイギリスで始まった産業革命は欧米各地に波及し日本では150年前から近代化が進みました以来世界大戦や核の脅威エネルギー問題気候変動パンデミックと人類はさまざまな困難に直面してきました地球や人類の誕生と比較すれば近代化の期間はほんのわずかな一瞬の出来事ですしかしその進化のスピードは想像もできないほどの速さだと言えるでしょうそのような中イーロン・マスクはなぜテスラを通して持続可能なエネルギーを実現しようとするのかなぜ困難に立ち向かってまでスペース X を立ち上げ火星行きの実現を急ぐのでしょうか今日はその意味を探っていきたいと思いますはい。
there's, it's eventually, history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, well, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Jinrui wa chie o shibori, so shite ooku no gisei o haratte samazama na gizitsu o shinpo sasete kimashita. Shikashi, Jinrui ga chokmen suru konnan wa tsugi kara tsugi e to yasumu koto naku yatte kimasu. Hinuku na koto ni sono mondai no ooku wa Jinrui mizukara ga tsukuri dashite rimo da to iemasu. 急速に進む技術の進歩とそれに伴って起きる社会の変化人類の未来には一体どのようなことが待ち受けているのかそしてマスクは何を思い描いているのでしょうか We should be concerned about demographic implosion So if you look at countries like Japan, most of Europe, China and you look at the birth rates in a lot of those places is only at about half of the sustaining rates. When you have an inverted demographic pyramid, so if you like, look at the, the pyramid, and you've got age creation. 60 year olds, 50 year olds, 40 year olds, 20 year olds, you know, like sort of a demographic pr pyramid. Right. Um, and in some countries, it's sort of, it's like an upside down pyramid. So it'll sort of fall over. It's like, it's just, it will not, will not stand. What we'll actually have in those countries is a very high dependency ratio, where the number of people who are retired is, is very high relative to the number of people who are net, net producers. And so you cannot, the, the, the social safety net will not hold. We didn't evolve for this because we sort of evolved to just always procreate and it wasn't birth control or anything. Right. We just like have lots of babies. It's like pop the course and like hopefully some of them would survive. That would be, that was like all of human history until very recently. And now it's, uh, you know, you've got cases like Japan where adult diapers outsell baby diapers. Europe's in a similar situation. China's headed the same way because you know, they've had the one-child policy and then even though they've relieved the one-child policy, the social norm has become to have an average of one kid. So even when they relieved that requirement, it didn't change. You can, you can imagine, like people sometimes say, well, what about um, immigration? It's like, okay, look, there's one and a half billion people in China. Where is China going to get 700 million new people? Okay, that's like three Indonesians. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work. And the, the full gravity of this will, it is not well understood, but will become a severe, severe issue in the, in the next few decades. You've got to have uh, all the things necessary to sustain civilization on Mars. Um, and the reason that the ships from Earth stop coming could be World War III, or it could be due to a slow decline of civilization. So civilization here on Earth could end with a bang or a whimper. Um, but it could it also <laughs> be like a whole series of things. Like, so like what killed the dinosaurs? Well, right. it wasn't just one thing, you know. Right. It was like a whole bunch of things happened in a row. And, and uh, you know, um, well, they, they, they could have taken any one of those things. They had like three things happen and no dinosaurs. Galactic time scale, even with sublight travel, you could absolutely colonize the whole galaxy even some of the neighboring galaxies. Um, so if you gave, if you said a million years with, with, with and say we, there's, no, there's no new physics, could you colonize the galaxy in a million years? Absolutely, the entire galaxy. It's mostly about the species. I mean, uh, there've been some real doozies of like, uh, you know, massive meteors and super volcanoes and the, the continents moved all over the place and Earth's been a snowball and super hot. If, if, the, if, if you read like the, Geological history of Earth is like very long and complicated. Um, so, and then there've been so many extinction events, not like just a few. Um, yeah. I mean the the Permian extinction event that was a real rough one, where it's like well over 90% of all species uh, died out. すでに巨大企業となったテスラやスペース X を経営し、それ以外にも多数の企業を立ち上げて経営している上に。ツイッターも買収するという常人では考えられない行動力と頭脳を持ったイーロン・マスク彼はたとえ反対されても妨害されても決してひるむことなく自分が信じる道を進んでいく人間だと誰もが認めるでしょうそれはすでに証明されていると言って間違いありません理論理屈だけではなく夢と希望を持った冒険心旺盛な起業家イーロン・マスクの壮大な計画とはどんなものでそしてそもそも人間は一体何のために生きているというのでしょうか Why do we need to build a city on Mars with a million people on it? Yeah, I think it's important to have、um, 
a future that is inspiring and appealing. I mean, I, I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars、uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in, that it's incredibly depressing. If that's not the future that we're going to have, I make you know introduce something new to the probability stream.、Um, sustainable energy will happen no matter what. If there was no Tesla, Tesla never, never existed. It, it would have to happen. Out of necessity, it's tautological.、Um, if, if you until you if you don't have sustainable energy, it means you have unsustainable energy. Eventually, you'll run out,、um, and the the, the、uh, laws of economics will drive、uh, will drive civilization towards sustainable energy inevitably. The the, the the fundamental value of a company like Tesla is the degree to which it it accelerates the advent of sustainable energy、uh, faster than it would otherwise occur.、Mm. Um, So when I think like what is the fundamental good of coming like Tesla,、um, I would say hopefully it does. If if it if it accelerated that by a decade, potentially more than a decade, that would be quite a good thing to occur. That's what I consider to be the the, the, the fundamental sort of aspirational good of, of Tesla.、Um, then there's becoming a multi-planet species and space-faring civilization. This is not inevitable. It's very important to appreciate this is not inevitable. The sustainable energy future, I think, is largely inevitable,、uh, but being space for civilization is definitely not inevitable. If you look at the,、uh, at the, the progress in space, in 1969 we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969.、Hmm. Um, then we had the, the space shuttle. The, the space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit.、Hmm. Then the space shuttle retired and. The United States could take no one to orbit. So that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. This is not. People are mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it, it will, I think, it, by itself, degrade. Actually,、mm-hmm. you look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they're able to make the pyramids. And they forgot how to do that.、Hmm. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. Essentially, the, when, when I was a kid, I was wondering, kind of, what's the meaning of life? Like, why are we here? What's it all about? And、um, I came to the conclusion that、uh, what, what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask. And The more that we can increase the scope and scale of、uh, human consciousness, the better we are able to ask these questions. And so, so I think that there are certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good.、Um, and、uh, some of those things are, in the long term, having long-term sustainable transport and sustainable energy generation.、Um, And、uh, to be a space-faring civilization, and for humanity to be out there among the stars, and be a multi-planetary、uh, species.、Um, I mean, I think the being a multi-planet species and being out there among the stars is important for、uh, the long-term survival of humanity, and、uh, that's one reason. Kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then, the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure, and it makes people excited about the future.、Um, you know, if you consider two futures, one where、uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system. Um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring、uh, and make life worth living. And I realized, while there's life, there is hope. There are many ambitious experiments planned for the future. 
we will map the positions of billions of galaxies, and we will better understand our place in the universe. But we must also continue to go into space for the future of humanity. I don't think we will survive another thousand years without escaping beyond our fragile planet. It has been a glorious time to be alive, doing research in theoretical physics. The fact that we humans are ourselves mere collections of fundamental particles of nature have been able to come this close to an understanding of the laws governing us and our universe is a great triumph. And I'm happy if I have made a small contribution. I want to share my excitement and enthusiasm about this quest. So remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. While there's life, there is hope. 世界人口についてはさまざまな予測がありますが国連はピークを超えた後に人口の増加は穏やかになると予測一方で米国の研究者は2100年までに中国を含む世界183カ国で出生率 TFR が減少すると予測そのため中国の人口は2100年までに 48% 減少し日本タイスペインを含む23カ国では 50% 以上減少すると予測しています核の脅威は増大し異常気象や食料問題そしてエネルギー問題と環境汚染国際紛争と大きな戦争のリスクグローバル化した地球ではほぼ全ての出来事が連動しており人類の未来はますます不確実性を増していますこれらの諸問題を解決すべくイーロン・マスクと彼のチームはイノベーションを駆使して壮大な目標に向かって挑戦しているわけです持続可能なエネルギーの開発と宇宙開拓の夢を実現するためにそしてワクワクできる世の中を追求していると言えるでしょうマスクが言うようにテクノロジーは時間の経過とともに自然に発展するわけではありません限界を超えるために挑戦を続けて初めて技術は進歩するのですテスラやスペース X がこれまでに成し遂げてきたことを見ればそれは明らかです未来を予測する最良の方法は未来を想像することだと信じて情熱を持って前進することが我々人類にとってベストな選択肢だと確信できるわけですさて皆さんは人類の未来持続可能なエネルギーや宇宙開発についていかがお考えでしょうかぜひ皆さんのご意見ご感想のコメントをお願いいたします最後までご視聴いただきありがとうございました